Are you an adhd -er who would like to build your self-confidence, but you just can't figure out quite how to get there? By the end of this video, you'll have tangible tips on how to build your self-confidence that are ADHD friendly. And if you are late diagnosed with ADHD or you believe you have it, helping women with ADHD grow their self-confidence as well as their self-esteem is what I've dedicated my life to and what I love doing because I too have ADHD. And I know firsthand how hard it is to navigate when you don't have the right support in place. I would love to speak to you directly and to offer you my support. There is a link to book a call with me in the description of this video and the call is absolutely free. Last week I did a video all about self-esteem and today we're talking about self-confidence. So what's the difference? According to Psychology Today, self-confidence is about how well you control certain aspects of your life and self-esteem is about self-love and how you value yourself. Today's video will be all about what you can control. Here's the secret sauce in a nutshell. Self-awareness and paying attention to the things you say and believe about yourself is the key. One of my favorite quotes is by Henry Ford and it is whether you think you can or cannot, you are correct. I love the impact yet simplicity of this quote because it gives you complete agency over yourself. Step number one is having an I can attitude because an I can attitude is the basis to encompass self-confidence, while an I cannot attitude is the lack of self-confidence. Now, before I come off as sounding completely ableist, I'm not saying that having ADHD doesn't come with challenges, it does. But just because an ADHDer might need accommodations or to find a different way of doing things, it doesn't mean that we can't accomplish all the things that neurotypical people can accomplish. And having an I can attitude is the basis for building your self-confidence. This might be a new way of looking at things for some of you. And when I first started implementing what we are going to go over today, it felt really uncomfortable in the beginning for me as well, but I promise you it is so worth it. Saying to yourself, I can't is waving the white flag, but saying I can gets you up and moving. Step number two is failing forward. The second step to building self-confidence is to fail forward. So what does that mean? Failing forward means that a person embraces failing as stepping stones to future success. To fail forward means that you have chosen to value every failure for the lessons learned and then applied those lessons in future efforts, even if those efforts might also result in failure. When you're failing forward, each failure moves you closer to ultimate success. Many ADHDers struggle with rigid thinking or black and white thinking. I'm either the best at something or I'm worthless. I want to plant a seed. What if there was a gray zone and not everything was as black and white as your ADHD brain made it out to be? What if you learned from the mistakes that you made? What if the path you thought you needed to take wasn't the path that was going to get you to the goal you wanted to achieve, but because you adopted gray zone thinking, things turned out even better than you had hoped for? By not attaching our self-confidence to solely what we do and instead looking at barriers that stand in our way as opportunities to grow, learn, and to proactively practice resilience instead of feeling defeated when we are leaning into building and maintaining our self-confidence, which gives you the fuel to continue with that I can attitude. And again, this is a work that I am doing and I am so passionate about helping women build their self-confidence. So if you'd like support in this realm, there is a link to book a call with me in the description of this video. I'd absolutely love to chat with you to see how I can support you. Now, tip number three is nobody is perfect. Perfectionism is not only a time waster, but it's also something that many ADHDers struggle with. So why do we struggle with this and what can we do to stop being perfectionists? I created a video last year on perfectionism that's linked in the description of this video that will go into this a little bit more. We struggle with perfectionism because we are not confident in our abilities. One of the reasons that we aren't confident comes back to how we were nurtured growing up. An interesting stat 
is that the average child with ADHD will hear approximately 20,000 pieces more of negative feedback than a child who doesn't have ADHD. So for some of us, perfectionism, imposter syndrome, or even masking are trauma responses to growing up with ADHD, especially since so many women with ADHD didn't know that they had ADHD until adulthood. The important thing to remember to help you with your self-confidence is that for one, no one is perfect. For two, most people are so self-absorbed in their own existence that they aren't noticing whether or not you're coming up short in the world. And finally, at least for the sake of this video, doing something at 70% will give you far more self-confidence than not trying to do it at all. And who knows, you might even surprise yourself. So you do your best to have an I can attitude, even if that means that you fail forward and that you're not perfect. Do you see how this all ties together? Let me know in the comments what your takeaways are to this video. And again, if you'd like to hop on a call, this is what I've dedicated my life to, helping specifically late diagnosed ADHD women with their self-esteem, their self-confidence, as well as emotional dysregulation and all of the isms that fall under the ADHD umbrella there is a link to book a call with me in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you got a ton of value and I will see you next week in the next video.